This is my essence. Please, treat it with care. Treat it what you hold. Fuck. Well, I have no idea what to do with that. I'm going to try taking it back to herself. Oh. Is that you over there? I've gleaned something very important indeed, thanks to you. The real distant light is far and frail. So far indeed it can't is. be seen by the naked eye. But with everyone's eyes together, it appears. Finally, it all makes sense. I'm certain now. I will be a finger maiden. I've gleaned something very important, I'm certain now. So what hint do you have that she's going to be here that though? What's the hint?
on my map here it just says the fucking noble gold mask and I haven't even seen him. Oh no, I have seen this guy. I thought when they mentioned the gold mask, it was a guy with like a big smile across his mask. Huh. Oh. Bum bum, my bum bum. Oh my bum bum. Oh my bum bum. Oh. Oh good heavens.
my first haircut in Texas. You know what she charged me for my haircut? Ten dollars. Do you know when he came out on the road with me on the Kings of Comedy and did the Steve Harvey show? Do you know how much he was making per haircut? Fifteen hundred dollars a haircut. You know how many haircuts I got a week? Four haircuts a week. This dude made six thousand dollars a week cutting hair. When I went bald, he damn near killed himself. But you know what he did? He went back to what he do. Now guess what he got? He got four salons in Texas and two barber colleges. You know what he make? Six million dollars a year. You know what he do? He cut hair. Listen to me. Y'all got a gift that God gave to you at birth. If I was you, I would do that gift for you mess around and leave this world. Because your gift will make room for you. You'll be sorry. I can't be no man. I'm sorry, she a fucking fan. I get bread on these fucking bands. I'm so you so don't got I Circle key with tanks, but I'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. Putin may circle key with tanks, but on nights the German boy don't go into the Genshin Empire Discord server. Oh my god, this place is full of the kids of Roman. No, it's hey!
you just destroyed him and made him tap and then just kind of embarrassed oh, him you? in a way. No, I think he's thinking this. No, you think like Yes, I think, yeah, yeah, I think, I think that you, you don't understand the game. That's right. But I don't think. I think he was happy. You think so? I think like, he was happy because, because happy like, you tapped him. Of course. Why well, what, what's happy? gonna happen if, if he was not there? No, but I was saying, do you think he's mad that you won't fight him again? I think that's what he was expecting. Yeah, they, they never asked if I did Oh, they didn't? Of course not. How mad do you think Connor is that you won't re rematch him? Because to me, it just looks like, he, I feel like he's so mad that... They already know this ain't no put up I roll it up. Yeah. Hit the cush. Find it on my line. Don't hit me up. What you doing? You doing? You doing? You doing, Amaga? You doing, bro? You don't need that, yes. You tell yourself things, but you don't execute on them. Oh, my. Oh, my.
was dinner. Shout out. So when you see those people yeah. they're yeah. out to buy sneakers. Well, this, uh, Supreme lines now. Supreme's got a whole thing with Supreme. lines. They, they wait in line for three or four days now. And almost, for what? Almost weekly. For uh, what? I'll show you this shit. You're probably going to freak out when I show you what they're waiting for. Please do. Uh, yeah, shovels, bricks, with just the word Supreme written on it. Shovels and bricks. T-shirts are the main thing. What is like, Supreme? Exactly. It's a brand. It's a streetwear brand. <clears throat> and people wait in line for bricks? I'll show you. Fucking kids today. This is what happens when kids don't go outside. They don't play. They don't play sports, and they stay at home. They just play video games. Fancy Reagan's fault with the just say no. <laughs> These kids smoke dope. They see life for what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna wait in line for an hour for a fucking break. Like you said, Supreme, Supreme crowbar. They sell a crowbar. Yeah, so the crowbar would just have like the name Supreme on it. Okay, well, who's using that? Uh, no one uses it. It's like uh, that's. It's real. You have to look into the brand a little bit to understand it, but it's sort of part of the joke almost. They're making parody of the craziness of it all by just throwing their brand name on stuff and people are buying into it. Go back to the other page. It. So, Supreme, like with the top 10 non wearable Supreme products. There you Jesus go. Christ, they have fire extinguishers. Yeah. No jugs. But some of the clothes are cool. They have no jugs. It's just, uh, I mean, you gotta be really into it. Some people are really into it. Like I said, they wait in line for days. A lot of them though are making money off of it because they can buy it for 40 or 50 bucks and flip it for 200. Well, I don't understand. Like, why is everybody buying this? Limited, limited quantities and whatnot. But what is the big deal about Supreme? I can't, cause you have to look into the history of There's some YouTube videos you can look up. Um, you sound like Eddie Bravo. Gotta look into it. Hey, you have to look into it. It's really hard to explain, and I like can't even. It take me half an hour to get into it. I don't want to hijack the show oh, about Supreme right now. So. Well, I just, I did, never, I wasn't aware of this. I thought it was just like a T-shirt. That's where it started. You so know, Josh Martin wears them. He spends a lot of money on He's them. a fool. Well, he, he wears those goddamn Yeezys that you wear too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't spend too much money on them. I get them for retail. I wouldn't buy them otherwise. Yeah, Josh Martin is like into every trendy thing. Yeah. Everything that comes out, he's like way ahead of the curve. That's the Supreme. Oh, oh, I don't know the exact, exact. Jesus Christ, Joey. I don't give a fuck. I didn't know about this. You buy a hammer. It's a Supreme on it. The fact they sell nunchucks is hilarious. Supreme nunchucks. And we wait online when we were kidding out of it. Not for anything. Like last night I was watching something, the real uh, story about the Godfather. And they showed when they released the Godfather in New York. And there were lines. Yeah, for the movies. For the movies. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm sure I waited in line to go see Star Wars. But not three fucking days. No. I think we camped out the night before. No. Not for a hammer. What did they camp out for back then? They camped out for something. Really? I don't I feel that. like the first I ever saw it was uh, iPhones, when the first iPhones were out. I remember going to the mall and going, what in the fuck am I seeing? 
and there was a giant line outside the Apple store. And this was like when one of the first iPhones was coming out. And I was like, why are you waiting for a phone? You don't have a phone already? Like, is this the only way to get the phone? It was, it was all so confusing. But it was a thing where people would wait in line and then they would look at each other. And I remember when, <laughs> I remember when they were waiting in line for Harry Potter, when Harry Potter was coming out and people were driving by and they were yelling out, Dumbledore dies at the end. You know, they, were, they were yelling out all these different spoilers. All I typed in was waiting in line for in Google. And the only things that come up are iPhone Supreme and iPhone 8 or gas. Yeah, gas. We that's waited in line. That's right, the seventies with the flag. Yeah, red, green, a yellow flag. What was that? Uh, there was like in the mid seventies, there was a gas shortage. So green meant that you got gas if you had an odd number, like if your license plate had an odd. Yellow was even. And then red was was shut down, bitch. Oh yeah, that's you right. Remember that they had the flag yeah. seventy three to seventy five, maybe something like that. I don't know the exact dates. Then they had a wheel line. Studio fifty four had a huge line, but you got big. Studio fifty four. Yeah, yeah, like, Studio fifty four was on fire. You showed up, and you didn't guarantee to get it. You got picked. Right, the way they do now in Hollywood, like they pick hot chicks. Right, so they pick hot chicks. What was the thing we were talking about when they, they won't let a guy in without a chick? So yeah. Like some formula to go out in clubs and Yeah, LA. they never would let guys in without chicks. So if you walk into a club with three guys that don't want you, they want the chicks in there first. Yeah, well, the last thing you want is a sausage fest. Look at all those dudes trying to get in. Look at this. Look at this. That was inside. <laughs> outside. That's outside. What am I thinking? That's outside. That's outside. What a zoo. Hey, just try to get in. <laughs> what was the big deal about Studio 54? You could smoke coke, dance, get your dick stuck, get your shoe shined, all in the same place, and be all by six. It was a very, you know, I mean, everybody was there. Like, this Who was that? Andy Warhol? That's Andy Warhol. But Who's the girl? Look at her. She's got a beer bottle in her mouth. You know, champagne. Oh, champagne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a fucking Black Sabbath is wow. 54. Look wow. at Mick Jagger's wife dancing with uh, Andy Warhol. Look at Liza Minnelli behind them. Wow. So it was just like the place to be. It was the place to be. You could go crazy. How you know? strange. Even strange times, huh? <laughs> but here's the beauty of it they have a station on Sirius. It's called Studio 54. You can just put it on on Sunday night. They do a podcast, and what they do is they interview people that actually used to go there or work there. And I gotta tell you something, Joe. They had a dentist on about a year ago, and his wife said it was crazy listening to this interview about what their life was. They were professional dentists making money in New York. They stayed out till five, six every night. But went home, took the kids to school, went back home, took a nap till one. Got up, went to the dental office, worked till five, went home, took another nap, fed the kids, and at nine o'clock they fucking bring the kids downstairs to their moms and they do it all over again. Five nights a week, over and over. And the lady was saying, not till years later. Liza and Millie thought I was a publicist. She goes, You didn't know I was a dentist. They just saw you in there every night. It was all trust funders, you know. That's all the people who could do that type of shit. Wow. Do hello till all hours of the night. You could put it out. They even had an interview about when Bob Hope went to Studio 54. Bob Hope? Bob Hope walked into the studio not knowing what the fuck he was going to well, where he was going to walk into. He went out to the middle of the floor and started dancing, and these chicks got together and started tying Bob Hope up. <laughs> just tying him around like an Indian. And he's just standing there like laughing Bob Hope style. And he's like, it's a fucking joke. They just left him there. <laughs> and they just tied them up and left them. There's tons of stories out there like that, you know, like just. But then it moved on. But you got picked to go in there. How did it move on? Like, imagine how weird it must have been when it finally the door shut and that was it. The people where it was their whole life for years. Well, people move on. You know, clubs yeah. get hot. Different clubs. I went there one time in 1983, maybe 84. It was done. My friend was already done. Was, yeah, it's done. It was just a bunch of assholes trying to be cool. Wow. And I found out dollar bill. I was out of money with a bag of blow, no cash, not a dime in my pocket. And I looked down at four in the morning, it was a hundred dollar bill, and that's how I got saved. That's how I got home. Wow. And that was it. That's my Studio 54 story. It is weird, those cl the, the nightclub scene. 
A nightclub seems a very strange scene. And one club gets hot and then it dies off. And the people that are in that business, like try to figure out what makes something hot and what doesn't. You got to rename places and redo them and reopening and grand reopening and get people to show up. Like I remember hearing that they were paying Paris Hilton like shit piles of money to just show up at clubs. That's it. The Kardashians, any, any of those people, they pay a shitload of money. You're there, they take pictures, uh, and your club gets hot. Then after about a year, you start taking partners. Uh, yeah? Sure, yeah, because you know it's on the way down. Uh, so against you. So after a year, some guy comes in, I love your place. And, uh, uh, I'll take care of you, man. And that's how you get out of it. Or you do a lot of people did. They just light the place on fire. Start from scratch. <laughs> a little Jewish lightning. The place starts from scratch. You know, I knew the guy that owned the gay clubs in Houston. Like in the 70s. And he was telling me one time. He goes, yeah, once we got our use out of them, you let them on fire. I left the insurance. And then open up another club. That's it. Jewish lightning. Jesus Christ. It's a weird scene. You know, I mean, people that just look forward to just going out and just drinking and dancing and snorting coke every night, just looking for, like, experience, just something different and wild that takes them out of their everyday grind. Do it over and over and over, over and over. That's different. Like, when I was growing up, it was Club Harry. It was big. And the rooftop, you paid, like, 24 bucks to go in at 11 o'clock, and you drank all night till 7 in the morning. Mm. 24 bucks, all you could drink. It's shit booze. I mean, you're not drinking Kovacic and shit. Right. But when you're doing blow, you're just burning that shit anyway. You come out, they give you some sunglasses, and that's it. If you went in after three, it was, it was like 20-something after 11, and then like 17 bucks or you could drink after three. So seven in the fucking morning. And people were packed. That's what New York was about back then. It was just people staying out till seven, six. New York is what, a 4 a.m. last call? When's the last call in New York? <laughs> I have no idea. Florida, I think it's even later than New York. Florida, Florida closes for one hour. Five o'clock in the morning. So let's say you're at the news cafe. Right. We're bullshitting, we're having a good time. At five o'clock, they'll come over to you and say, hey, do me a favor. By five o'clock, the bar's gonna close. So you can't order beer till six, so we just order 25 beers. <laughs> And you wait till the ball opens at six, and now you're fucking ready to drink again. I know. That was for one hour. One hour. This was back, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when we grow. What a weird rule. One hour. Remember that place we used to go to? Right down the street from that improv? Yeah, the news cafe. Yeah, right? that yeah. was a great place. Was a great place. Great breakfast. Great fucking bar. That club went downhill hard, though. Yeah, that club. And that place, well, the whole Coconut Grove area became the only thing that's still open are the dueling pianos the pizza joint that mall the dueling piano place is still it's open yeah it's in that little mall there with the movie theater they always have those right next to improvs like they have one in addison too right addison they have one up next to john lovett's up in universal they do yeah they used to if there's a fucking uh what are you pulling up there miami has a 24-hour Really? Now. Oh, just Miami? Just in the Miami Entertainment District, it says. Oh, well, that makes sense. It's 4 a.m. Broward County and Key West. Yeah. A little different everywhere else in Orlando. West Florida. Palm is where we always worked. We either worked in Miami at the Improv, which is West Coconut Palm. Grove, or we did West Palm after Joel opened up that new place, the Big Giant That's place. Place. That's a great place. Yeah, the, the new place, though, is like uh, a theater. Right. It's like 600 seats. It's, it's fucking place. huge. I mean, that's a huge club. It's a great place. That, yeah. And even Fort Lauderdale was a great club. It's got the casino, which they're redoing over. Oh, yeah? That shut down. Oh, did it? That shut down until next year. Yeah, we have no action down there. No kidding. That was a fun little club. Yeah, that's a fun little club. With the a good there. size. That one in the Hard Rock's a good size. Uh, I just thought, yeah, Last time I was there, there was a couple next to me that was fucking in the bedroom next to me. And, like, animals. I mean, like fucking animals. I mean, like porno film animals. Like, like I was lying in bed and I heard, and it was in the afternoon. I was trying to take a nap, and these people were hammering it, just bang, bang, bang. Ah, 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 ah. This guy's just fucking hitting it. I was like, Jesus Christ. That's that fucking Florida Oxycontin dick. <laughs> One of those pain relief centers, you take two of those things, you can hit your hammer with a dick ten times. It's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Asa Rutan told a story the other day um, that I read online on one of those martial arts websites about his addiction to yeah, ice. Yeah, that's a great article. Ooh, scary, scary shit. Scary shit. Or he was talking about trying to get off of it and how difficult it was. And you're talking about a guy with like an iron will, you know, and Boss Rutan. Imagine the average person who just has a hard time getting out of bed in the morning, so doesn't have a lot of discipline, and they get hooked. Like, that's it. That's it. You're gone. Fucking amazing that that stuff's legal. Did you watch 60 Minutes three weeks ago? No. That was the whole, that was the motherfucker's motherfucker. What was it? Just about the op opioid epidemic and oh. how the DEA stopped prosecuting the word came from, you know, it's just a nightmare. They're fucking terrible. Things. Listen, those things are terrible. Yeah, there was a whole article recently about the company that, that sells most of the opiates and the family that's behind that company. And how many billions of dollars that they've made off the opioid crisis? Opioid? Opioid or be it? How we say it? Opioid. How we say it wrong? What's that shit grips you? That synthetic heroin? That's what that, right, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Essentially, yeah. It's, uh, it's a bad grip. Like I said, I took a 16th one night in my living room and I had to lay down. And that was my, that's my whole resume with Oxycontin. And I, I'm a fucking mule. I can eat 2,000 milligrams of THC and live a 16th of one of those pills. I popped, it was just a little piece, nothing. My blood pressure dropped so fucking much. I just laid down, went to sleep, and I knew my pill career had come to an end. and never even let it start. Really? Never even let it start. Can you believe, brother? In two weeks, it's gonna be 10 years since I've done that wipeout. I want you to think about that. Wow. I want you to years. really think about it. I still remember being at Cobbs with you that January. And like going, it's been two months. I don't know if I can really do this shit. Like, I don't know if I control this feeling, and I controlled it. So you, like when you quit, what was like the first week like? Hell. Hell. First two weeks were hell. Did you think about going back, just like you can't do this? Or did you know that you had, had to make a change? I had to make a change. I knew that my spine was starting to hurt. I knew that the spine was starting to hurt. Yeah, I was trying to get jolted. It's oh. in just by four in the morning, you know, after you do coke. Oh. Right at the tip over here. A lot right of we, people who've done coke get like Parkinson's. Yeah, or, fuck that. No, 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 no. no. Do you think that's related? Well, a lot of a lot of old timers that did a lot of coke in the seventies, and then they wound up like some serious neuromuscular disease. Yeah, absolutely, that shit shocks your central nervous system. There was times I did cocaine that was like electric. It was like when you put that thing in your hand, <laughs> where you get electrocuted, you could feel the electric in your body the next day, like that, <laughs> like you, in your brain, like you can actually see this. <laughs> the neurotransmitters are fucking on fire. You could feel that. You know, I could tell when I would go on stage after doing two or three nights of blow that week. I had no control. I really had no control over my material. I had no control over my delivery. That's what I wanted to tell you. Like, you're, you're just the way you can your mind off. Yeah, your mind can't grip it. You can't sell the joke. The facial doesn't connect with the hand movement mm. or the breathing. So, like, I knew that that was always going to be a danger in the future now, you know. I take all that, uh, for like a year, I drank those, uh, what's your buddy's name that makes the neurosurgeon, no shakes, the football player that fucking oh, beat the guy up, Romanowski. Oh, Romanowski? I took all his stuff for like a year, just to, Did you? yeah, the orange drink and stuff. Mm -hmm. Prodero one, that stuff. Yeah. Is that yeah. helpful? Yeah, it felt good. It felt a lot better. Give your brain some nutrients. control. Yeah, but 10 years, I mean, that, that, uh, I had to do a benefit in the whole book. And I had gotten high, like that whole summer I tried to get off coke. I was doing the heroin, I was trying to get off the coke and shit. And then that's the time I ran out of heroin. So I was doing like maybe once a week. And the whole thing went down with Marilyn, I knew I had to stop. And then I had this thing in Hoboken, I went. The whole thing went down with Marilyn Martinez? Yeah, when she, she was dying. I went, I went back east that week. And she was dying. I don't know what happened. It was like, you know what, I was trying to get coke on Friday night, I couldn't get it. And I just took it for what it was. I was trying to get coke on Saturday, I couldn't get it, so fuck it. I took the plane back Sunday, I couldn't get it here. Something happened, I couldn't get it. And then that Monday, I had a meeting to do a movie, and at the end of the, uh, the meeting, the guy said, listen, man, we know about your drug problem. So before you say yes, we 
want you to think about this because you can't miss a day on this movie. You cannot be late. If you're late, the, the whole movie can't shoot because it was a cast. Mm -hmm. We all shot in one room. It was an AA meeting. So I thought about it. I'll do it. And that was the roughest fucking month ever because I was just going home and before eight o'clock would start, I would just go to bed because eight o'clock was my cocaine time. That's when my body would start to ache. That's when I couldn't even, you could be telling me the most important thing in your life and I'd be watching you, but I couldn't hear. Mm. All my mind was focused when I was getting that blow at eight o'clock. Wow. And then I would figure out how to get the 60 bucks. You know, I'm going to go to the ATM machine. I would shoot over the rock and roll rouse. There's that ATM machine in front of Rock and Roll Rouse right there. Yeah. And I would take 60 bucks out there. Dog, I would run every red light to get to that ATM machine. Like, I didn't give a fuck. Like, I didn't give a fuck. And, and then from there, I would just make the U-turn, go to my dealer's house, go home and leave the coke there. And now I was ready for the night. I was in peace just knowing that the coke was at the house. I didn't have to do it. You know, I, I, I've never been physically addicted to something in a way where I, I had a hard time kicking it, but I've had some psychological addictions for sure. And I think that one of the things that, that I've gotten out of this month of uh, no, the sober October thing that Tom, Bert, and Ari and I are doing is that uh, a lot of it is psychological. A lot of it is psychological. Because just knowing that we can't smoke pot or can't drink all month, you start thinking about, oh, we're at the home stretch, November 1st, around the corner. Like, I, I don't really feel like I need to get high. It's not like I need a drink tomorrow. But it's knowing that I can't do it for the month or it hangs over your head. So that's what's even more impressive that you could kick it because it's not just the fact that you, you have like a physical problem. But you also have this psychological problem. Like the psychological part of it is like it's it's a pattern that you're comfortable with. You got used to that pattern at eight o'clock. You're looking for the coke. You go and do it, and then you're off. It's like you're off, even though you're you're in chaos. Your life's in disarray, and you're in the grips of addiction. You're comfortable with that feeling. You've been there before, and you're but for whatever reason, when people get used to fucking up. And they go, why do I keep fucking up? One of the reasons you keep fucking up because you're used to fucking used up. To and it's not an uncomfortable feeling in the sense that it's, it's, you know it. It might suck, but you know, it's the devil you know. You know? There was nights I didn't want to do it, and I still did it. You understand well, yeah, me? Like, yeah, I didn't want to do it. Like, I didn't need to do it. Like, I didn't right. feel. I just wanted to do it. But it was just something to do. Like, it was just something to do. Wow. It was just something to do. But, you know, what I tell people all the time is you want to have to quit. It just doesn't happen. Like, I quit at 44. I'm no fucking genius. But it took me two years. Like, it was a two-year struggle, like a personal little struggle. Like, When did you know that, it was, that you were free? Because you didn't go to AA no, or, or no, Narcotics Anonymous. No, I went to one meeting, an AA meeting. And I went in Hollywood, which everything is good until you go to in Hollywood. Because in Hollywood, you act a, you you add the dramatic and the actor image to it. You know, if you go to an AA meeting in Jersey, they're in there smoking camel red, fucking talking from the heart. You go to an AA meeting in Hollywood, you got people with AA tattoos on their arm, <laughs> hugging each other. You know, it's a fucking jamboree. They're just happy to be in AA. Yeah. It's like it's a new clan that they're in. And then what happens is, after about two months in this area, for some reason, I've noticed because I have a lot of friends in AA. They, somebody approaches you, says, "Hi, you know what's going on?" You're like, "I'm struggling." They're like, "Why well, have you seen Dr. Bob?" Like Dr. Bob, Goose, I'm just making this name. Right. Up. And like Dr. Bob, oh my God, tell him about Dr. Bob. Tell Joe about Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob has changed your whole life. So basically, you'll see Dr. Bob. He gives you bullshit referendum, whatever description uh, what you have. You know, oh, like, oh you're bipolar. You're this. Now they start shooting at her all at you. Oh, oh, you're this shit at you. So you're really not sober. Um, You're really not so, but you see now, after I got clean, I discovered I had a problem. I discovered I was bipolar, or Johnny Musk, or this, <laughs> or that, or this. Right. Now that medication they give you, you know, on top of the old opiate epidemic, how bad a fucking Adderall? Adderall is so fucked up we as have, Adderall. We have someone every month that's on Adderall when they're doing the podcast. And you it's obvious. Them. Yes. They can't shut the fuck up. They talk at a really fast pace. They're really excited. The are getting a little bit too much energy. There's something about them that you just know. And you just, like, you can tell. Like, you're like, whoa, whoa, slow down. Sometimes I'll, I'll offer them a drink. I mean, I've had people on the podcast where I tried to figure out what the fuck was going on. And then later on in the podcast, they told me they did Adderall. 
And I was like, oh, okay. All right, now I get it. Now, now I know where all the tanks are. That's been a crazy kick. We knew they used to take two out of all the fucking the chicken of West Palm or something used to drink. Oh, dude, everybody does. Do you, yeah. do you know how many people do it? No. I'm getting stunned. All my, like, the families that I know, like, with, with my kids or friends with their their kids, and I get to know these people, fucking, these, all these, like, successful suburban people are doing Adderall all the time. That's how they get through work. That's how they, they become successful. They're always hustling. They're always getting things done. And these motherfuckers, they always want the newest shit. They want the newest watch. Oh, is that the newest Hue Bowl? Is that the newest this? Is that the newest that? Oh, he's got the Mercedes AMG. Oh, look, he's got this. And she's there. She bought a house in the Oaks. Oh, you know, look at this. She's got a that. And look at that purse. Yeah, where'd you get that? I heard that's such a Hermes. Oh, you can't get those. All they're doing is like chasing after these things so they can go places and other people will look at this new thing that they have. It's very strange. It's like this one thing, like if you know somebody who like collects a certain thing, like they're, you know, really into fucking whatever it is, old samurai swords or something like that. Like they love the history of it. That's not what these people are doing. They're buying things so they could bring places and other people would go, ooh, ooh. so they get a feeling, like a feeling of, uh, I guess a successful feeling, you know, they get a, a feeling from other people recognizing that they have the latest thing. Like, oh, where'd you get that jacket? Oh, look at that purse. Oh, look at that wa- Look at that chain. How many carrots is that ring? Let me see your ring. Oh, girlfriend, let me see your ring. Amazing. It's so cute. Those shoes are so cute. Oh my God, so cute. And they're just like weird fucking just pilled up people with weirdo speeded up people that are like chasing after the next object it's very it's a very strange and they don't talk about shit i get together with these people you know because we'll have dinners together or our families will get together the kids will play we'll go to a party together and you know a good 20 percent of these people do not talk about shit all they talk about is objects they talk about this object and that object and how much this is worth and how much real estate's going for here and that's the whole focus of conversation it's like an anti-human conversation because they're not talking about anything human they're not talking about you know the, the community what they love about life and their experiences as a parent and none of that man a lot of them don't even pay attention to their kids they 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 go and drink and leave the kids outside the kids are kicking other kids with sticks and shit and going nutty and then when they come out, oh, no, my kid's a good kid. He doesn't do that. And then they go back inside and drink more. It's like crazy. It's really interesting to see. It's like the things that fuel success in a lot of people are a, you know, a lot of these folks. It's like this this need for material possessions. And then you know, this is what's going on. You didn't come. You and I didn't come from the best home conditions available to us. Yeah. I'm not insulting you. No, no, you're right. I'm just saying no. that you had to deliver papers, and your mother had to work, and Lou, and the whole fucking thing. You ever sit there sometimes at one of these fucking parties with these people who have everything? Yeah. Everything we didn't have, and you're like, my parents would be way too much better than these fucking people as a parent. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there every day now, and I have a parent. I go to pools, I go to gymnastics, and I got a fucking recital. I mean, I have to do this. It's right. like, who the fucking part of my life I am. But... I see these people that do this shit, and I'm like, my mother was a fucking boogie. My mother owned a bar, and she was a drunk, and she was a way better parent than these fucking guys. Because she was there. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? I think what we're talking about with this pill thing, there's a lot of people that are on antidepressants. There's a lot of people that are on Adderall. There's a lot of people that are on Xanax. There's a lot of people that are on a lot of weird disassociatives. And these disassociative pills, you see it in how they interact with their children. They just, they just zone out. They're not there. Even if you're like stressed out about your kid, you're interacting with your kid, at least the kid knows you're communicating with them. The kid's probably not happy that you're stressed out, but at least you're there. When you're zoned out on pills and staring at the fucking clouds, it's just, it's just not, it's not a good way for human beings to interact with each other when you're hopped up on some weird shit. And I think, I mean, I don't know what the actual number is, but in the communities that I associate with, I would say a good solid half of these fucking people are pilled up. A good solid half. They're either pilled up on Xanax, 
what's really hilarious is I'm, I'm talking to some of these people, and they're like, I don't know how you smoke pot every day. I'm like, bitch, you take a Xanax every morning. Every morning you take a Xanax. I know a lady who takes a Xanax every time she gets in her car. She's like, this is too much traffic. Whoop. Pops a Xanax. For traffic, they pop a Xanax to go to sleep. They pop a Xanax because they have to fly. Oh, I have to fly. I need a Xanax. I need an yeah. edible. Yeah. Those four hour flights, I just can't sit there no more. Well, those edibles make you think about the universe. People say, oh, those conspiracies. And I'm not trying to be It's a different thing. thing. It's a different thing, though. When I have mercy in the morning, I don't fucking get high. Like, I don't get high. Like, I have to work before school and I drive and try to, because I got to walk to school. Right. I want to read my kids. They really want me to work out. They want you to smell like a reaper? I want to pick up and put a teacher's hand on you. That's Friday. You were kidding me. <laughs> you were punching last Friday, so I can't embarrass my daughter. So I tried. Right. Uh, that was it. That was it. Once they said it, that's funny. In the afternoon, you know, I take my chances. I get high, go to the gym, and class, go to swimming, go to ballet. What the fuck we have to do? You know, I'm out with my friends, but doing a podcast and doing comedy. So, but I don't know. I don't have, have beer in my house, John. You don't really drink. You've never. Been I, don't want song, no, no. I don't want to have all of my. I don't want to have all of my. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's one thing that I could kick that, uh, you know, like this sober October shit, like if I could, uh, if I had to choose, like for the rest of my life, no booze or no pot, I would say no booze in a heartbeat. Yeah, but I like a cold Heineken. I should say, oh, cold, cold Heineken. I do, I do too. Love this fucking delicious. But I get something out of pot. I get, like, sensitivity, I get community, I get compassion. I get introspective thinking. I, I start. I examine myself more. I become more humble. I get something out of it. I, I get like real benefits out of pot. Like a lot of the benefits of benefits that some people would call paranoia, or you know, the, the people uh, they freak out. They, you know, they think the walls are closing. I love that. It's, yeah, it's good for I you. I love. I live in that world. I fucking <laughs> love it. I love oh, somebody yeah. telling me I'm a loser, I'm getting together. You I haven't done dick today. How the fuck did you watch TV? Uh, I, I think I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Right. Right. For cooking the booze this month? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he stays off of it. Well, what do you think of rehab, rehab is? Too? You put these guys in rehab this month. We're not in rehab. Yeah. Rehab is yeah. just to let you know where you stand. 60 days of you not doing a certain something. Makes you know where you stand. And sometimes you go, you know what, Joe Rogan? I'm not gonna smoke pot, but I'm gonna have my drink the way some That's cool too. You know. Bird has a problem uh, flying, you know, he likes to fucking get twisted, you know. But Bird's what you call a social drinker. Yeah. So fucking Florida. You know. They wake up, they have their little fucking cocktail, whatever, they take a nap, they go to the beach. You and I don't know that life. I've never lived that life of drinking all day and then taking a nap. Bert's a real soldier, you know. Bert's not fucking around. Bert's not an amateur show. Bert's the real deal. I saw him running a couple of days. That's how I saw him running. I threw my car at him. He was running at me and shit with his little thing. And I just took the car and just started going at him. And he's like, eh, eh, eh. and also he looked at me. He's like, ah, because he's in my neighborhood. So I saw, I, I watched him a lot. I went over there, I tried to get him high, he wouldn't fold. <laughs> so I'm the really was proud gonna bring, uh, He was going to bring a uh, drug test the other day. When we were, uh, I was on number 13, I think, and they were on uh, number 14. And uh, Ari was going to stop at CVS and pick up those marijuana tests. <laughs> they just didn't have the time. No, I'm very proud of Bert. And all this is going to let you do, look, at even you with the reefer now, it's going to let you know that you didn't have to speak. It's like when I went to prison. I, the hardest thing about prison wasn't going to prison, you know. It was how am I going to live without my marijuana? Really? How am I going to fucking sleep? I wasn't worried about yeah. not being out in prison except marijuana. I, I Did asked, you get any in prison? No, you could. 50 yeah. bucks for two joints. I was brown weed. I wasn't doing that. But after the first week, you learn about yourself. You learn that you could go without, which is one of the strongest things that could happen to you somebody it's like when you're when you're in love with that girl and you, you're destroying your life you yeah. quit your job and you drink and you act like an asshole and then she goes away to hawaii for two weeks after 10 days you're like fuck that bitch <laughs> <laughs> what do you do <laughs> yeah your yeah, wife goes back to see the mother and you're sitting there going what am i doing with what am i doing yeah. with i'm much happier in this house I could put her in the back of the way and not see. You know, that's what happens. When you realize you can do without, 
That's one of the biggest things in the world that could happen to you. Yeah. You have no idea. Well, you don't think you could do it out in the beginning because you think maybe you could possibly get her back. If you can get her back, everything's going to good. You got this bad feeling because she's thinking about leaving. You're like, oh, no. She's going to leave me. But maybe I could talk her back in. Maybe I could buy her something. Maybe I could do something. Maybe we could change my ways. And I'll bring her back. And I'll bring her back. And everything's going to be fine. But everything is fine. And if she leaves, you'll just meet somebody else. That's it. Just come on. Relax. It's like when I gave up sodas. I never thought I could give up a Coke. Really? Are you fucking crazy. Do you like those Zevias? Do you like those things? What's Zevia? Oh, Jane, go get them. Stevia. Stevia. It's like there's sodas with that are flavored with stevia. People think I'm, I'm doing a fucking commercial for these things. They don't. They haven't paid me a nickel. I'm not taking any of their money. So they're soda, but they're flavored with stevia. And you no don't. Shit. No sugar Coca-Cola? at all. They have like um, raspberry. They have um, root beers. They have like one that's like a Seven Up. They have one that's like a grapefruit soda. They have a bunch of different ones, man. They're fucking great. I love them. I'm so hooked on water now. I don't give a fuck. Water's great, too. I don't give a fuck anymore. They drink the shit out of these stupid things, though. Oh, they do have a cola one, right? Give them that cream soda. That one's the shit. That right there. Man. Diet Cola. uh, Diet Coke sucks. About a month ago, I was on a plane. I was a little, you know, loopy. And I just said, let me try a Coke. Let me go, let me get a Coke. I couldn't even finish the little fucking eight ounce glass. It was really? too sweet. Yeah. Oh, I had some the other day accidentally. It was a late night drive through. I was starving coming home from the store and I got a burger. And I asked for a Diet Coke and they gave me a regular Coke. And I went, oh, this is so good. It was so delicious. You know, what's I, you, once a month, I'm going to give myself a Coke, or actual Coca Cola once a month. What's you? And I get the Mexican one. Yeah, the Mexican one. Yeah, a taco joint. Yeah, the the cat, go to the cat. Yeah, yeah. Where you guys usually do it right there. They're talking good. But once you realize, like, you know, we got a, I grew up in Jersey. I got a sandwich. I got a bag of chips. Right. It's not the sandwich that kills you. It's a bag of chips. If I have a turkey with Swiss and avocado, I'm not going to fucking die. Right. It's the fucking 22 ounce bag of chips. All those things, once you give them up, like I had to give them up with Weight Watches, they were tough. Potatoes with breakfast. That was tough? That was tough. That well, fills you up. For me, uh, when switching over to, like, in and out and getting a double-double with the lettuce... With lettuce wrapping on the top of it, style, it's is. called protein style. Protein. That's the way to go, because you still enjoy the shit out of it. It tastes amazing, but you're not getting all that bread. It's still fantastic, and it's really not bad for you. I mean, it's just ground beef, cheese, lettuce. It's not. I mean, there's nothing terrible for you there. I just think that, you know, when you, you spend too much time eating 